Thanks everyone for showing up. Um, our discussion today is yeah, what path forward for those of us who are still using Drupal 7. Um, start with, you want to start with an introduction? Introduce yourself? Uh, sure, we, uh, we work for OpenFlows. We're a cooperative uh, out of New York. And uh, we work with nonprofits, advocacy groups, um, uh, academic institutions, and small places. Um, so nonprofits is a huge part, well, it's, it is our business. Um, so their needs are, uh, uh, are different um, than other institutions might be, or organizations might be. Um, sure. um, my name is Eric, and a lot of you already told you, we're from OpenFlows Community Technology Cooperative. Um, I just, before I start, because some of what I am about to say might be controversial, in our community. I just want to sort of let you know where I'm coming from and my background in Drupal. Because um, I want you to understand that what I'm saying is not coming from the outside. It's not coming from somebody who's not been involved in the community for a long time. I started building with Drupal in 2003, so that puts me at about version 4.2, which means Drupal 7 is the eighth version of Drupal I have used to develop websites on. I was a primary organizer of 10 Drupal camps in New York City that took place from 2007 to 2012. My first Drupal event, there were 20 of us, Dries, James Walker, Neil Drum, I think, um, and that later became DrupalCon. So I've sort of watched the community grow and stumble and grow and stumble. So what I'm saying is coming from a position of love and concern and uh, deep concern for the community. Now the question, who is the community? Drupal speaks a lot of the community. For a while, the tagline even became, come for the code, stay for the community. But who is the community? Right now, in Drupal land, Two-thirds of the community is still using Drupal 7. DrupalCon, four, five, six years now, has been exclusively about Drupal 8. You try to talk to somebody about building in Drupal 7, they will basically make you feel like you're somehow not a real coder, or not up to snuff, and not, not up to date, and there's something wrong with you. Um, so the question I ask, you know, first, if we look at the statistics, Drupal 8 is a niche market within Drupal. So again, who is the community? Is the community those that are using Drupal? Is the community those that develop modules and themes and support clients? Is the community those that contribute to and control core dev? Or has the community become those that fund core dev. Again, where are we? The Drupal learning curve. This, I stole this image from James Walker presentation in DrupalCon. 2008 or something. Um, this is the Drupal learning curve. You get, yeah, we're doing great, and then all of a sudden there's the new version, and forget it. Um, but where we are, Drupal 7 end of life is approaching. Drupal 8 is a completely new tool, rewritten every line of code. The only thing Drupal 8 shares in common with Drupal 7 is the guy who owns the name. Many of our nonprofit organizations spent years, 10 years, slowly building out pieces of their infrastructure because budgets are limited. And now we've got this big thing, and what do we do with it? There's no simple upgrade path to Drupal 8 from Drupal 7. It's very complex and very costly, and that's the key factor here. It costs too much to move to Drupal 8. And if we look back at those statistics, it's important to realize the Drupal community as a whole is shrinking. Drupal use is falling off. 
It has been falling off since the release of Drupal 8. So, again, where are we? We've got all these organizations. We've built up all this institutional knowledge. We've built up our own skills. We've built complex systems. And many of us are not willing to just see that expire. Um, that's a lot of investment from organizations. And we can't just see that expire. When Drupal 6 was released, a group of us got together and released a statement uh, called On the Disparity of Versions, saying that Drupal was running the risk, Drupal Core was moving away from Drupal Contrib, Drupal Core was no longer being informed by the community, it was leading off on its own, and there was a risk that Contrib and Core were separating apart from each other. That got worse with Drupal 7, and with Drupal 8, Essentially, what Dries did when he decided to move Drupal to a brand new architecture, he forked the community. It's just a fact. Two thirds of us are still using Drupal 7. The Drupal 8 end of life is a requirement. The tools that it is built upon will go end of life. There's nothing the community can do about it. There's nothing we can do to support it. Drupal 8 end of life is a hard fact. Drupal 7 end of life is an arbitrary political decision. It's important to understand, as you talk to people about this and you get pushback and people are like, Drupal 8, Drupal 8, Drupal 8. Well, Drupal.org still runs Drupal 7. You ask people why, they'll tell you because it's a really complex site that we built out over years and there's a lot of stuff and we can't do it really. Uh, well, they expect us to do that. Groups.Drupal.org still runs Drupal 6. Yet, if we try to talk about Drupal 7 and say it is still a viable tool, somehow people look down their noses at us. Um, we used to eat our own dog food in the Drupal community. Drupal.org used to be the first site that ran the release candidate of Drupal. It did not get released until Drupal.org could cleanly run that code. As the largest Drupal site, it was a great way of making sure our code was stable. Groups.Drupal.org still runs Drupal 6. Drupal.org still runs Drupal 7. Yet, all those companies that could be working on this, they're pushing Drupal 8 and pu pushing Drupal 9 because it's all about money. So, how did we get here? <sighs> Drupal really used to be a sustainable tool. The community was sustainable, the software was sustainable. We could build things and have a long-term vision in mind and know what was gonna happen. That changed. Changed slowly over time, and partly we have a model of a benevolent dictator for life, and Dries' life changed. He went from being a college student to not being a college student. His life shifted rapidly. And with it, the decisions he made for the community. The decisions that have been made for the community have no longer been from the community. All of this changed over time, and it shifted slowly towards venture capital funding and money, 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 and corporate interests, and slowly the idea of long-term sustainability was replaced with short-term profit. And now we have people saying, hey, Drupal 8 is great. You know how many billable hours are in that? That conversion's gonna take a lot of time. Money, money, money. For 15 years, we've been hearing, since Drupal 4.2, we've been hearing, next upgrade, gonna be easier. Oh, well, we're hearing that again. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I see a lot of things lagging behind in Drupal 8. Drupal 9? I don't know. You go to the Drupal 8, you go to the Drupal contributed modules page, go to the most popular modules, you can't get to the bottom of the page without Drupal 8 modules still being in alpha. These are the most popular modules in the community. They're not even in alpha yet, and we're working on Drupal 9. The community has fractured, and it's time to just accept that and move on. So what can we do? The power 
of community and the power of open source software and free software and the power of the GPL. The power that that gives us as software users is critical in this moment because we do not have to follow what one or two well-funded individuals want us to do. We can come together as a community and we can forge our own path forward. We can fork. We have. You know, it's sad, but it's time to break up. Don't feel bad. It's not you. It's Drupal. It changed. Sold out. Got gentrified. Lost its edge. Maybe it didn't even really care about us to begin with. But the community is strong. And there are many paths forward. It just matter, it's just a matter of where you and your, your organization and your project needs to go. And so now that I have laid out this terrible, horrible situation we're in, I'm going to pass this to Lottie to help you see the way out of it. How do you change the... Uh... Just use the down key. Okay. So the question is, what are your options? Um, and so that's the part that I'm going to do. Uh, sorry, I'm just getting my notes up here. Um, so what's the best way forward uh, for a small or medium-sized nonprofits um, and other budget-conscious organizations? Uh, your options depend on a number of factors, including budget, size of your site, and your basic requirements. Um, some questions that you might ask yourself is, uh, is the cost of maintaining a Drupal site a necessary expense? Does your site contain a few pages that are updated frequently, infrequently? Do you need to create a site with a very distinct or look or a unique feature um, or many unique features? Is your site a data heavy web application um, uh, or, or not? Um, as Eric has said, you know, one of the options is Drupal 8 or Drupal 9. Uh, as he's explained, Drupal 8 is a very different framework and platform than 6 and 7. Drupal 8 has positioned itself towards requirements uh, of larger and more complex enterprise websites rather than the small to mid-sized nonprofits. Um, it's not it's not, it, 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 it's the power behind it and the resources that are needed isn't something necessarily that's needed for a simple site or a brochure, a bro, brochureware site. Uh, the benefits of Drupal 8, especially for enterprise sized organization, are accommodating complex websites and applications out of the box, scalability, security, um, built in RESTful web services and JSON API, built in content moderation. Configuration management, you can finally throw out features module. Um, fully responsive out of the box, easier to configure multilingual sites. Thank goodness. With Drupal 9 release date slated for June 3rd, 2020, if one was going to upgrade, it would be required that you upgrade to Drupal 8 first, and then you'd be able to upgrade to Drupal 9 once it's stable. Um, in theory, the Drupal 9 upgrade, the, Drupal, the, the upgrade from Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 is supposed to be, uh, is not supposed to require heavy lifting. Now, how does Drupal 8, how do the changes in Drupal 8 affect um, somebody that's going from a Drupal 7 site? The architecture has been revamped, which will require that you port any Drupal 7 modules that have not been ported to Drupal 8 yet. Redevelop, you'll have to redevelop any custom modules and features that you've created on your site. You'll have to reconfigure all the Windows views because Drupal 8 doesn't have an automatic migration path for views. Uh, and you'll need to do a complete rewrite of your custom theme. As well, you'll have to migrate your data from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. If you want to get a sense of how much time it might take, consider the following. How much time did it take to uh, how much time did it take to develop the last site that you're the site that you're using currently? How long did it take? And if you've pre previously gone through an up or upgrade, how long 
and how much money did that cost? Unfortunately, the move from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 is not an easy upgrade path. It requires a total rebuild. Drupal 7 to 8 migration is very different than, <coughs> than the Drupal 7 uh, maintenance updates that you may do to your site. Uh, so don't under, underestimate the time, the resources, and the cost and, um, of doing an effective migration from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. If you have a hefty budget, <coughs> this might be a viable option for your organization to go to Drupal 8 and then to 9. But for small and medium-sized nonprofits, Drupal 8 is most likely not the best option. I'd like us to consider these categories of websites, sites that, are limited, that have limited content and are not data-driven, dynamic data-driven sites with limited flexibility where you don't need a lot of features, you don't, care, you don't really care as much about which, what are your choices for themes, dynamic data-driven sites where you need a lot of freedom and you need a lot of flexibility. When considering costs, think about hosting costs, Think about the necessary experience needed for installation, development, and maintenance. And think about migration costs. So, if you have a site, uh, going down. If you have a site that's not that's a, that's a non-data driven site, um, if your site's limited in content and it's not data driven, the, the cost of maintaining a Drupal site might be unnecessary. If you need a low-cost hosting solution, you could, I'm, I'm sorry, if you need a, a low-cost hosting and maintenance option, uh, you have a couple of options, a static site generator or a website builder. Website builders are the lowest budget. They are sites that are proprietary online tools for building hosted sites. The tools do not require any coding or design skills. You can use drag and drop editors in order to create the pages and do it quickly. The key difference between a website builder and your current Drupal 7 site is that the 7 site has access to a database and you don't have the flexibility in a website builder that you do with something like Drupal. You're limited to the templates that they provide and you're limited to the features that they provide. Examples of this are things like Wix, Squarespace, and uh, web. The other option is a static site generator. If you need a little bit more flexibility in design and you update your content infrequently, a static site generator might be an option for you. Like for instance, you might have an annual event page or campaign page that you put up, but you only use it once a year. It, it, the only, it's, a, it's a static page that you just need to put up to uh, show for that campaign or event. Or you might have a blog that you want to use this for. A static site generator takes source files and generates an entire website, HTML website. Whoops. Sorry about that. Um, if you have a, a brochure, brochureware site that you update regularly or you lack the funds for, develop, for a developer, that might be uh, a solution for you. Static, static sites are lightweight and fast. They create a secure, low-maintenance uh, site. <coughs> and uh, there actually is a uh, session this afternoon on one of the um, static site generators called uh, Tome, T-O-M-E, that you might want to sit, on, sit in on if you're interested in that. So uh, it's like going back to... Uh uh, HTML files, editing with Dreamweaver. Pardon me? It's kind of like going back to editing well, actually, HTML what, files. What you, repeat the question. Right. Uh, repeat the question. He, he was saying that it's sort of like going back to uh, creating sites by using Dreamweaver. That's true, right? Um, because it is, it is, it's all done with a template and then the generator gener spits out the HTML, yeah. Um, so, so that's one option that you, that you could use. Some popular website uh, generators are Jekyll, Pelican, uh, Hugo, and then Tome, the one that, as I said, there's a session for this afternoon. They're, they might require some developmental experience in order to uh, create the templates if you, if you don't have any experience in that area. But once the templates are, are created, there's a workflow that can be set up so that you could update it 
if you need to. But as I said, that's a good option for if you have content that's updated infrequently rather than frequently. Um, if you do have a data-driven site, WordPress CMS is an option that you could use if you want to move away from Drupal. Uh, one of the things that's often said about WordPress by users is that it's easy to use. They like the interface. They can figure out what they need to do in it. And for nonprofits where dollars are short and resources and time is short, sometimes that's important to be able to have something that people can, use, can, can learn and use quickly. Um, so if you have a brochure, a brochure where a site uh, which you update regularly and you lack the funds for a developer, you might consider moving to a different CMS similar to WordPress. WordPress has two op options. There's a hosted op option and there's a self-hosted option. Um, the distinction uh, between them is that the self-hosted option allows for more versatility. Vers uh, Flexibility, I can't get that word out there, <laughs> versatility and uh, in design and features than the uh, hosted one does. Um, the difference between WordPress and Drupal 7 is that Drupal has better access and granular control, it's more scalable, it's more flexible. Uh, let's say that you have a website that needs to have a distinctive look and it needs to have customized purpose or um, uh, features. In that case, a better option for you might be to use a web application framework. Uh, that way, if you have a dynamic site that has to meet these custom specifications that a content management system cannot, your needs can be better suited to something like this. Frameworks such as Ruby on Rails, Django, ASP.NET, Code Igniter. Sites that are built with that are things like Stack Overflow, The Guardian, Netflix, Instagram, YouTube. Um, web, web frameworks make web application development easier by supporting the, the development of web resources and web services and APIs. And the framework is a set of libraries and tools that are often, that, that promote reuse and that provide basic database access, templating frameworks, session management, um, login systems, and user privileges. And then beyond that, you build everything from scratch, and uh, so you have to know how to program, but you have the freedom to create a distinctive look and the flexibility to customize whatever, you need, whatever it is that you need to create. Um, there are two more options. And both of one of these is staying with Drupal. Maybe you like your Drupal site. Maybe it's not time for a facelift yet. Maybe you don't have the money to be uh, making another step right now. If you're happy with your site, remaining with Drupal 7 is a viable option. Drupal 6 reached the end of its life in February of 2016. And yet, presently, companies like MyDropWizard are still providing security updates for Drupal 6. Drupal 7, the, Drupal 70, the Drupal 7 community uh, it, support will be su provided through November 2021. And after that, there'll be vendor extended support, which will be provided through 2024. The Drupal Association is currently taking applications from companies that are willing to commit to providing long-term support for Drupal 7. And with the large community, as Eric pointed out, the fact that two-thirds of the community is still using Drupal 7, so with the large community and consultant-based support, Drupal 7 could well extend beyond 2024. It could be supported through, through, this decade, through, through the end of this decade, depending on changes in technology such as PHP versions. Another option is someone who's kind of new on the blog. Five years old this month. Oh my goodness. Sorry. And that's backdrop, backdrop CMS. So let's say that you're, you're, you're using Drupal 7 and you're planning to do a redesign of your site. And you want to remain with something familiar 
Or you want to remain with a CMS, you want it to have security, scalability, um, all the things that, uh, that Drupal 7 have, and maybe more. And yet, your budget is an important, important consideration. The backdrop, C backdrop CMS might be in your future. Backdrop's mission states, Backdrop CMS enables people to build highly customized websites affordably through collaboration and open source software. Backdrop is highly compatible with Drupal 7. It contains a few critically important improvements over Drupal 7, including better content editing experience and built-in configuration management tools and revamped blocks and layouts. They have a number of principles that they've created, and I'm going to uh, show those to you as I'm talking. So, as I said, one of the things that's been revamped is the blocks and layout system. Backdrop decouples the concept of regions from themes into a standalone layouts. And what this means for nonprofits is that the presentation of your website becomes a skin that can be easily replaced. And therefore, the website becomes more affordable because you don't constantly have to redesign it if, you are, if what you're just wanting is a new look and feel to it. Um, many widely used contribu con contributed modules, including views, have been revamped and become core functionality. And there's a built-in upgrade path from Drupal 7 to Backdrop, in line with their first philosophical principle, easier updates, backwards compatibility is important. Keep the AI API change to a minimum and always provide an upgrade path. Backdrop is geared towards small to medium-sized businesses, nonprofits, and academic or educational sites that need an affordable website. Let me repeat that last part, that need an affordable website. I repeat that because affordable was the crux from which Backdrop sprang. The initial Backdrop community consisted of developers who have been members of the Drupal community for 12 to 15 years each. As Drupal 8 development unfolded and the direction began steering towards the enterprise market with increased complexity of the systems and no built-in upgrade path from Drupal 7, these dedicated developers recognized that an affordable solution was needed. They recognized that for budget-conscious nonprofits, the increasing costs of upgrading Drupal is not a sustainable solution, and that the direction of your CMS cannot be driven solely by developers. In order to ensure that the mission remains central to Backdrop, as, is, as it's updated through the years, the Backdrop CMS Project Management Committee, PMC, is responsible for the philosophy and the goals of Backdrop CMS, and then guides the community to ensure that they stay focused on the core values of the project. The PMC seeks to reflect all perspectives of the backdrop community. So this includes users, businesses that are involved, uh, developers, um, site builders, in other words, people that don't code but want to build a site with uh, backdrop. All of, the, 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 all of those interests are represented on the project management committee. You can use Backdrop for everything from a single admin's personal blog to a complex multi-role business e-commerce platform. Backdrop is the perfect solution for comprehensive nonprofit, academic, and government websites. Its benefits include a built-in upgrade path for Drupal 7, uh, it accommodates complex websites and applications. It has scalability, security, content moderation, configuration management, fully responsive out of the box, multilingual capabilities, and shared hosting is an option due to the fact that one of their principles is the fact that they'll always ensure that uh, 
It has great performance, meets low system requirements, which allows for affordable hosting with basic requirements. Now granted, as you add more features and you need and and uh, and and it becomes more complex, of course, hosting needs increase. Backdrop is Drupal 7 Plus. It's the fork that Eric mentioned earlier. It's celebrating its fifth birthday this month. The Backdrop community is continuing to grow and has, proven, has a proven track record of success. The fact that it provides an easy upgrade path to, from Drupal 7 and, and one of its core principles is backwards compatibility means that Backdrop should be considered as one of the options that might be an affordable next step for your Drupal 7 site. Um, yeah, just one last little thing about Backdrop. The way I, I think about Backdrop is it is the Drupal 7 API and methodologies with all the features of Drupal 8. It's got the user experience that's much better. It's got configuration in files. It, a lot of change had happened in Drupal, which we thought was going to be Drupal 8 before Dries announced Symfony. So that was the starting point of Backdrop, which is kind of like halfway between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. So we have configurations in, in files instead of in the database. Um, and as new features are added to Drupal 8, those issues get added to the Backdrop issue queue, and we have been keeping parity with Drupal 8 in a system that is Drupal 7. You can port a module, very simply. Um, great example, the rules module, really important module. Still an alpha for Drupal 8 after five years of development, four fundraising campaigns, $100,000 of labor. The rules module was ported to Backdrop by one developer during one client project in a week. Perfectly stable, full, usable release. Um, I guess one last thing I want to say quickly, wind up and then we'll take questions. The Drupal slogan used to be community plumbing when I first came around. I really liked that term. Plumbing's an important thing. Plumbing built civilization. We wouldn't have cities, we wouldn't have the internet, we wouldn't have any of these things without basic things like plumbing. But when people came into the community that were more concerned with funding and money, plumbing was dirty. Plumbing is manual labor. Plumbing is, is icky and, and I don't want to be associated with that. And go back and read the Drupal discussions of when community plumbing was removed and why and all of the interesting discussions that happened. It's very, very telling. But on that, we have a way forward and we have a good 10 minutes for questions. So I have a question about um, the amount of effort required to go from an existing Drupal 7 site to Backdrop. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we actually also focus on nonprofit clients, and if uh, a client's ready for a redesign and they have a D7 site, why would we not build it in 8 and build it in this? I, I don't know if I heard that as part of the presentation. I want to understand. So part of what repeat part, the question. Part of the things that uh, I think. Uh, so the, the question oh, was sorry. about the we have to repeat it for the mic. Uh, question was about the effort to convert a Drupal seven site to backdrop versus Drupal eight, and why would somebody us you choose one direction versus the other? Do you want to hit that? First? So one of the things that is important to think about if you're going to move from Drupal seven to another CMS is that especially like if you're gonna to move to D8 or you're gonna to move to backdrop, let's say, is that you need to think about these, these, these different issues, about contrib modules that you have, custom modules that you have, um, the theme that you have, uh, views, and migration of your data. So if you have a site where uh, you have, the first thing that you would want to do is you'd want to check your contrib modules and you'd want to see, have the modules that I have on my site been ported to D8? 
have they been ported to backdrop? I think you should look at both at the same time. Uh, how many custom modules and features do I have in my site that I'm thinking about moving? Because each one of those will need to be ported as well. Now, as Eric said, because the API is still the same, porting, if you have a lot of custom modules in that, porting from uh, D7 to Backdrop is going to take less time than porting them to Drupal 8. Can if you don't have a lot of custom modules, then you can drop that one. Uh, the other one is your views. Uh, there is no simple way to reconfigure views in Drupal 8. And so if you have a lot of views, that's another thing that you need to, that you need to put into the equation. Uh, and then the next one is the theme, that you'll need to rewrite your theme for both of them. Um, and you'd want to anyways because you're doing a redesign. Uh, and then the last one that you need to look at is migration of your data from one system to the other. So I think that any site that you're thinking about, that you're thinking about moving to something else these are, these are the things that you need to think about and consider. And look at each one of those things, um, because each one of those is going to be a cost that you're going to have to think about. Um, just a little thing. Uh, I converted a small site from Drupal 7 to Backdrop recently. Had six custom content types, and the entire site is made up of a dozen or two dozen views. As a lot of you said, that would have been a lot of rebuilding to go into Drupal 8. I converted that site to Backdrop in one afternoon. And it was complete and launched. So. A very simple site. Uh, yes, yeah, so a relatively simple. But all the custom content types all moved over perfectly. I didn't have to recreate them. So it's a lot. It, you know, as I said, many answers. But any other questions? Uh, so, um, one of the things that came up uh, with, you know, we still have a, a large D7 platform, um, and uh, when PHP went to 7, and the efforts, so um, how did go for Backdrop? Um, the community, it sounds like you have an active community, um, you know, was there any issues with, oh, something, we really still can't upgrade our PHP because of this module or anything? Mm -hmm. So the question was, was, was there any grief within the backdrop community moving from PHP 5 to PHP 7? And pretty much not. Um, like Drupal core, Drupal 7, uh, backdrop core was completely ready for 7.1 way before launch date. Um, contributed modules pretty much kept up as well. I haven't heard of any problems. Um, that doesn't mean there weren't any. But there was not a lot of talk in the community, and everything's ready for 7.2. Um, so no, those, those issues are being paid attention to, because that's, that's the critical thing that could break, right? If we can't keep up with the underlying code. And, and uh, again, yeah, uh, having, having an active community. Um, uh, about how big is the community? Um, for backdrop, uh, uh, I don't know. This is kind of a nebulous question, but and and how, and how does that compare to the community for uh, for Drupal? Uh, given there's probably overlap. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of overlap. I mean, Jen Lampton and Nate, core Drupal developers. Jen built Twig, the Twig integration for Drupal eight. She's the lead of of backdrop. So there's a lot of overlap between the communities and people are starting, now that we all are starting to evaluate, the backdrop community is starting to grow at a faster rate. But if I were to compare it to the Drupal community at a similar stage of evolution, it's very similar. It's a very diverse community, um, much more so than Drupal in some ways. Uh, the project management committee uh, is very diverse in terms of gender, race, economic background as well. Um, which is an element of diversity that gets lost in Drupal. Uh, so, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, you pick one line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I just want to add a cautionary tale. Um, so, I, I, I don't know if you were one of the people I was talking to in the chat, but um, I was working with Backdrop for my project, and my problem is definitely just between keyboard and chair. 
um, that I didn't have the Drupal experience, Drupal 7 experience to get out of Backdrop what I needed because I kept on seeing things in Drupal 7 that I could not use in Backdrop yet, and I was leaning on the community too much, it was just slow. So I ended up moving that project back to Drupal 7. If you're doing a project immediately, I think the Backdrop documentation oversells what is available now if you're not a coder. Um, if you're doing your upgrade, if you're doing migration closer to that 2021 date, I have no doubt they'll be much further along. I was very impressed with the people in the community, but I would, if you're not able to, if you're not personally able to migrate a module and don't feel comfortable doing it, I would not attempt a backdrop migration right now with a complex site. Um, and I, I don't mean to contradict what no, you're That's saying. a very important here, fact. Here's, here's the, line, the line that I found was I was beating my head on backdrop far more than I was getting my website done. So. Yeah, that, that is very true, and as Lydie said, point out the... Oh. What are you doing for the microphone? <laughs> I, I'm not sure how to summarize that. We, we just had somebody explain some grief and troubles that they had going to Backdrop because of the lack of available modules and the fact that they're not a coder. And this is one of the reasons Lottie was saying when you're going to go, you have to evaluate modules that are available. One thing that is getting better in the backdrop community is people, I'm not sure how long ago you, you were jumping into the conversation, so I don't know. Okay, then maybe I, I did talk to you a little bit, but a couple weeks ago somebody came in and needed the no current pass module. Um, they were not a coder. They jumped in. They said, hey, can anybody do this? I happened to have some time. I jumped in. I got it done in an afternoon. The module is now available, and... We now have two maintainers for it on the backdrop side. So if you do have things that you need, please reach out. But yeah, it's going to be slow, and it's not a perfect solution at all yet. Nothing is. Um, you know, what, another question over there? A quick one. What portion of the backdrop community would you say are folks who are using it as a path from Drupal and moving existing sites versus people who are coming to it for net new work? I don't know. The, the question was, um, back, the backdrop community, how much of it is uh, people coming in brand new and how much of the community is moving away from Drupal 7? Um, I really don't know. The, the interactions I've had with people, everybody I've been interacting with in terms of doing some dev and, and support work within backdrop has come from Drupal 7 community. Um, the, the foundation of the community is Drupal 7 core developers that were dissatisfied with the decisions that were made to change Drupal into a completely different tool. So it really is, for me, it's, it's my new home because it's where I can go from Drupal 7 and find a similar community working towards similar ethics um, and a similar project. Um, hosted solution. Is there any that exists? And if not, is it something that might be on the roadmap? Because I think that is something that's been missing from Drupal. Uh, they had Drupal Gardens, uh, you know, a little bit there, but um, and that's something that WordPress has offered. And I think that would, you know, again, if you don't already have it, that would fill a, a big need. So the question was about uh, easy hosted options. Is there one currently existing in, in Backdrop uh, along the lines of what exists in WordPress? I'm not sure. Um, I'm relatively new to the Backdrop community. Um, and I would suggest you go online and ask the question. Not to shoot their horn, but I was just looking at Backdrop's um, website. It looks like Pantheon has a, like, a custom option. Um, I mean, option, is but... there something like WordPress.com where you can go and register an account and build a site? At the moment, no. No. You can go and spin up a demo that will list, last for 24 hours and mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's no, as of yet, there's no hosting option like that. Although, I don't know if there's somebody working on it, because as I said, I'm, I don't know all the aspects. That, that might be something to know. drum up. Um, that might be something to drum up, because again, that was something. I had a uh, nonprofit client that 
Um, they, you know, I tried to, I, I steered them towards Drupal Gardens, and it just, it didn't work out, and Drupal Gardens, you know, it, it, it withered on the vine. Um, and so, uh, but that's something that WordPress has always offered, still offers, and um, could, uh, could fill a, a, a big need. Because again, 